Now, the UK's first 5G network, which should allow mobile users to download entire films in seconds, is being switched on today. EE is starting the service in six major UK cities, with 10 more locations due to come online by the end of the year. Our technology correspondent, Rory Kathleen jones reports. The first new masts have been fitted out, the network has been switched on. Now 5G can make the mobile internet reach everyone and everything a lot faster. At least that's the promise. You'll be able to enjoy much faster speeds. That means you can download things like box sets in seconds rather than minutes. It means you'll be able to do multiplayer gaming in augmented reality. At first, EE is just switching on the network in six cities across the UK. And even there, coverage will be patchy. For now, speeds will be roughly five times as fast as 4G. But eventually, the new network should connect millions of things as well as phones to the internet. Everything from driverless cars to dustbins. The very few people who have one of these phones on launch day may find the 5G revolution gets off to a bit of a slow start, but at least the UK is at or near the front of the pack with this technology. There is, however, one problem. E and other operators are dependent for some of their equipment on one controversial Chinese company. Huawei, according to the Americans, poses a security threat, and they're urging the UK government to ban it from involvement in 5G. This analyst says an outright ban would have a serious impact. I think it's going to be very negative for the UK. It means that we'll lose a near leadership position in 5G in Europe and it will slow everything down. And that's disappointing for the networks, but as a consumer, I'd be disappointed too. The UK's 5G revolution is getting underway, but even without any bumps in the road, it'll be three years before it stretches right across the country. Rory Catlin jones BBC News. And uh, let's go over now to our reporter, Sarah Walton, who is live from Covent Garden, which you might be interested to know has one of the strongest signals for 5G. And in fact, you're broadcasting to us using 5G, Sarah. Yes, that's absolutely right. The, today, the BBC has become the first broadcaster in the UK to go live using a commercial 5G network. And uh, what that means for me is that uh, there's no delay on the line. I'm hearing you instantaneously. And hopefully, it's nice and clear at your end as well. But, you know, all very well if you're a broadcaster, but if you don't have to go on television, what does it mean? Well, it means if you have a mobile phone, you're connected to uh, a 5G, you can do things like download a ultra high definition film almost instantaneously. Just to, to let you know what that means, if you are at home right now using your home internet connection, you're probably getting about 40 to 50 uh, megabits per second in a speed. So this phone here is from EE, who have launched the service today. Uh, we've done a little speed test. Right now, we're getting 240 megabits per second. But actually, this has been registering as high as 500 megabits. They say they're getting some speeds at 800 megabits per second. Now with me is Kate Bevan, who's from Which Computing. Kate, hello. Hi, Thanks hi. for coming along. So what could this ultra-fast 5G mean for us? Well, what it actually means is you've got loads of bandwidth. So it's not just the speed at which we get stuff down, but it means lots more devices can be connected to the internet and can be connected to each other. So we're not just talking about you know, smart devices that talk to their servers back up in the cloud, but they'll be talking to each other. So it's a, it's a, new, a new connected future is kind of one of the buzz phrases. So what sort of things are we going to see coming in? Is this you know, mobile phone technology? Or? Mobile phone technology. So things like when you go, like when you're in a crowded place like this, Covent Garden, when there are lots of people trying to get on the network and it can be slow, it can drop out. That won't happen anymore because the bandwidth means you'll be able to connect it. I also think it'll probably mean the end of home broadband packages because you know you won't need it if the 5G coverage is enormous. You'll just be able to put your devices onto the cellular network. It's going to mean an awful lot for gaming. You'll be able to do gaming from the cloud rather than needing some devices at home. I mean, it's a huge change, it really is. You mentioned home networks there. Uh, people may be watching this somewhere where they struggle to get 4G, even a 3G yeah. connection in places. Yeah. So why do we need 5G? Well, it, it's one of the things we, we talk about a lot, of, which is how people need to, we need to get 4G and 3G properly rolled out and into the furthest reaches of the country at, at the same time as getting this. We don't want people to be excluded. And at the moment, there are people still struggling to get a decent enough connection just to be connected to do ordinary things like shopping and banking and, you know, dealing with councils, dealing with... We're looking forward to that happening as well as 5G rolling out. 
So uh, it is only available in six places at the moment. Are you hoping to roll it out to some more towns and cities? Vodafone also bringing on their network in the next few weeks. And three too. <laughs> and yeah, three, three as well. Uh, is now the time for people to go out and get this? Do you know what? I would sit tight for a bit because at the moment we don't quite know how much, when all the networks are going to be rolled out completely. I mean, if you live in one of the cities and you've got some money to spare, absolutely, loads of fun. But it's quite expensive at the moment. The contracts will be evolving as time goes on. Okay, thank you very much. Well, all going well. It is hoped that there'll be coverage right across the country in about three years' time. Chatting to people here this morning, taking Kate's advice. They think they're going to wait just a little bit and see how it goes. Seamless in terms of what you were doing there, Sarah, making a little bit of history. In, my, in our own small way, yes. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much, Sarah uh, and Kate there.